Happy Tuesday to my favorite subscribers and followers on Instagram. Welcome to the next episode of Starling on Cinemas, Cinemas with an S. And today I'll be giving you my review on Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married? Before I begin, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment on the section below, especially share because I could really use the support right now because I'm at 120, so y'all might as well hustle and get the word out as quick as you can. And if you're new to my page on Instagram, if you're not much of a YouTuber, if you're new on Instagram, you happen to stumble upon my page for coincidentally, nothing is a coincidence, excuse me. If you happen to, to be on my page, follow me and like and share it on your story with your friends and family and comment on whatever you have to say about why did I get married. Let's get started on this journey together. So why did I get married centers on Eight married friends, Tyler Perry, Sharon Leo, Jill Scott, Richard T. Jones, Malik Yoba, Janet Jackson, Michael J. White, and Tasha Smith, who take their annual reunion vacation in the Colorado mountains. In the Colorado mountains. Revelations of infidelity involving one pair shatter the amicable mo mood, forcing the remaining friends to take a hard look at the strengths in their own marriages. The couples grapple with issues of commitment love, betrayal, and forgiveness as they try to move on with their individual lives. Looking back on this movie, from beginning to end, I have just now started to see it as one of Tyler Perry's more profound films, even in the early, early stages of his filmography. All of the thematic elements are there throughout the film about love and everything that comes with it, like commit, communication, commitment, intimacy, and honesty certainly holds up today and is something that a lot of couples sorely need in today's age. Still, like this movie came out in 2007, but we still need it now in 2021 for all the married couples. The story really stays stuck on the common struggle of troubled marriages and not for one second does the movie beat around the bush with the point that it's trying to present to the audience. I know a lot of people see this could be relative to anyone who watches Why Did I Get Married? <clears throat> Or its sequel, Why Did I Get Married Too? Because we are not all married, but watching this can help anyone who's single to not only have second thoughts, but to come with a prepared mindset and attitude. Because not everybody's relationship material. In a nutshell, to expect the unexpected, whether it is good or bad. This could come from, this could be a secret that someone in your relationship has to a surprising turn of events that help to ease the pain in the marriage. Now, I'm not saying to always look for those things, but ever, you know, we all have something in our lives that we are reluctant to share once we get into a relationship. So, like, if they happen to share, whether it is good or bad, just don't be surprised. Not just with what they tell you, but just the secret. Period. Now, for this character, now for the character section of this review, I'm going to break down each of the four couples and analyze them and how they started out to how everything gets resolved. So to begin with, we constantly get to mind, reminded that no matter which couple you root for in this movie, none of them are perfect, like none of them. You might see someone who is as happy as Gavin and Patricia or as unpleasant as Marcus and Angela. And you think that there is a better couple. There's always going to be a better person who loves you than in the relationship you are currently in if it isn't working going well, I could probably kind of say the same for myself. Like I know there's going to be somebody when I meet that person, like for life, who's going to love me for who I am and not force me to change or have some type of judgment towards me, poor judgment. But Terry and Diane, this is the first couple, Terry and Diane, Tyler Perry and Sharon Leo are the distant couple. Now these labels, I'm not even sure if these is a real thing, but this is something I made up just in case. So Terry and Diane are the distant couple. This is the couple who cannot find a way to make time for each other. And this is mostly because of Diane being such a busy woman who works at a law firm and, de and Terry is desperately wanting to have kids. Next, we have Gavin and Patricia, the so-called perfect couple. But this is only because they have the least amount of arguments and we all know that the truth eventually comes out. This couple is Janet Jackson and Malik Yoba. Enter Marcus 
and Angela, the average black pair that you that you're used to seeing on in some of these black movies where the the couple don't never get along, they always fight and, and there's toxicity, hostility, and dysfunctionality. With Angela being the one who mostly causes the drama, and it takes two thirds of the film until Marcus steps his ground like the man he appears to be. It takes two thirds of the film for a Michael J. White character to, to step up and be the man that he looks like he is. They, I know, he, we all know he is. And finally, we ended off with Mike and Sheila, the anti-marriage. This is the couple that has felt shattered and wasted the entire time. Not wasted as in poorly written, but I'm saying like wasted, like it's just so poor. Like the 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 dynamic between these two is so negative. Like because because all Sheila feels is pain and hurt from the words that comes out of Mike's mouth. Like when we first enter into the condition of their marriage, it should go without saying that this so-called match made in heaven was a mistake. Meanwhile, Mike is the irredeemable, unapologetically raw husband who cherry picks the negativity out of whatever he can find. Each of the other couples take a look at the mirror and pick out those gray areas that need to be saturated with improvement, courtesy of some secrets. You know, some secrets that were given at that infamous dinner table scene that my mama could not stop quoting over when each of these characters started talking. Like, like, Diane, have you told your husband that the tubes got tied because you couldn't have kids? Or, Marcus, why don't you tell your woman how you got VDs and you've been sharing it with all of us forever? Or how, hey, Gavin, Pat, since you two have been walking around like the perfect couple, Pat, Gavin, why don't you tell your wife how you called her stupid because she didn't strap your child in no chair? Oh, but that reveal about about Mike sleeping with Trina. I mean, it was not a surprise. I mean, she was he was more into her than he was in the in the Jill Scott's character and she was she was good to him. And but he was never good to her, but you know what? She remained the unconditional person in the relationship just as Jesus is. But with Sheila being the like-minded and innocent individual in the marriage, she would learn to find her own way and find happiness with someone else and this is where Sheriff Tony comes in. And Sheriff Tony is just somebody he me she meets in the Colorado mountains who treats her better than her wife than her wife than her husband. I'm sorry, sorry. But Jill Scott really gave a standout acting performance as Sheila by using what she had at the time as leverage as, for an acting advantage. She she was divorced in 2007, so she used this as an acting technique for her character in order to convey grief pain and shame despite being so good to Mike. Now even though this movie would have been filmed while family reunion was in theaters, you know, the divorce, the divorcing, the timing of the divorcing I'm sure was stated in 2006 and then while they were filming it, she used this as an advantage to act and that was brilliant. But in the end, thanks to Patricia, all is well with each of the on-screen couples. Gavin and Pat finally reconcile over the guilt of their son's death. Angela has learned to love her man in the way that he needs to be loved. And the same can be said for Troy towards Sheila. Diane learns to respect Terry's desire for quality time and does whatever it takes to get back home to her man. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 48% score. Of course they did. While I always will love Tyler Perry's films to be appealing while I always find them to be appealing. There's so much gravitas in Why Did I Get Married with the remarkable balance of comedy and drama without one overpowering the other while still maintaining relevance. That's perfect right there. Like I'm just saying, that's that's just perfect balance. Not a perfect movie, but it's perfect balance. This movie sorely deserves nine SOs out of 10. So that is my review on Why Did I Get Married? You can let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. And for those of you married couples out there, you can ask yourself too, why did you get married? Was it something that you see on the inside? Or was it something that you crave on the outside? Which one was it going to be? Hmm? But anyway, you can just ask, that's one of the questions you can ask yourselves as to why. But 
Needless to say, I'll see you guys tomorrow with my next review on Wayback Wednesday. Night.